Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is take a look at the aerodynamics of a current small car, a low price car, the Skoda Fabia. Now, I think a lot of people uh, don't even look at these sorts of cars, but this is where real progress is being made, in my opinion. Anyone can get great aerodynamic figures on a really expensive car where a huge amount of money has been spent on its development and the car itself costs a lot. It's much, much harder to achieve good outcomes with a low priced car. So the drag coefficient of this car that's just been released is just 0.28. And as I say, for a low cost car, in this case also a hatchback, that's actually very good. It's the current best in class drag coefficient, the Skoda Fabia. Let's have a look at how it does it. So the first thing is it runs standard air curtains. Air curtains are these little slots here that uh, have high pressure in front of them. They feed air through to the lower pressure behind a slot that's just ahead of the wheel and the air flows over the face of the wheel. Now, what does that do? It gives better flow attachment on the side of the body behind that rotating wheel. It'd be great if we could cover that whole wheel arch with a flat disc, but then the wheels won't be able to steer very well. So in fact, it smooths the airflow across the face of the wheel, and we'll get to the design of the wheel itself in a moment, causing better flow attachment here. Now, I don't know how accurate these flow representations are. It shows separation halfway down the side of the car. I doubt very much if that's the case. I think a lot of this is just artistic license. I'd expect flow to be attached right to the uh, leading part of that rear wheel. So air curtains built in. Used to be the province only of very expensive cars. Now, what about separation edges? What occurs at the back of the car? Well, we have attached flow down the side of the car and we don't want that attached flow wrapping around onto the back because where it would wrap around that corner, it would create a low pressure helping to pull the car backwards. So we want good separation edges. Now, on the side of the car, we can see there's a separation edge. And if we go over here, we can see it's that little uh, fin, that little extra attachment that runs down the side of the car. That causes clean separation there. But we've also got a separation edge on the rear light, so the airflow doesn't wrap around there. And we also have a separation edge on the rear bumper. Now you could argue, where's the separation edge up there? But I think styling probably prohibited it going in any separation edge there. What about the airflow across the top of the car? We want that to separate cleanly as well. If we look at the car in profile, attach flow, attach flow, and then there, there's that rear extension spoiler, that rear roof lip that causes clean separation at that point. Now, if we look at the angle of that rear lip, we can see it's a continuation of the roof's downward angle. Now, if it continues downwards, an extension of the roof in that way, it gives a smaller wake, a smaller area of disturbed air behind the car, the less energy going into the wake, typically the lower the drag. If we want to reduce lift, we would lift that spoiler up a little bit, which would create a higher pressure ahead of it on top of the roof. But this spoiler, you can see quite clearly from here, is primarily designed to reduce drag, but it would also reduce lift a little bit because we wouldn't have that wrap around, we wouldn't have the low pressure, and a little bit of that low pressure would have a slightly backward and upward vector causing a bit of lift. But the primary purpose of that rear spoiler is to reduce drag. Here's the side of the car again, and uh, Skoda say that they've done particularly well in uh, low drag mirrors. Unfortunately, we don't have really good photos of that, so it's hard to actually see how they've achieved that. Here's the best photo I could find of the side uh, view of the mirror. We can see the glass is deeply indented. It almost forms a little box cavity, little extensions all the way around the glass. Uh, not only good for, for uh, you know, shading the glass, but also good for drag. And the shapes here would be very carefully designed to have good attached flow and then separation only there. It's also very likely that the gap in between the mirror and the glass was optimized for good flow because we don't want to disturb the flow on the side glass, the side uh, glass of the door because if you have a lot of disturbed flow there, then you'll get a whole lot of drag being developed. So low drag mirrors as well. And underneath the car, 
And again, I couldn't find a really good photo under the car, only this, uh, this artistic representation. But we can see there are under trays there. There's certainly going to be an under tray at the front of the car. And while I can't see any under trays back here, you can be quite confident that the height of the various elements of the underbody were optimised to have attached flow across. And probably, and I haven't seen under one of these, but probably a slight upward progression, a slight upward diffuser, again, to reduce the size of the wake. Now, it's not many years ago that the underbody of all low-priced cars were just absolutely terrible. Uh, you look underneath and you see all these steps and jumps and bumps and a roughness of, you know, plus or minus maybe three inches, 75 millimetres. But not on modern cars, even low priced cars. And I would suggest the underbody of the uh, Skoda was responsible for quite a lot of that low drag coefficient. Now wheels. Wheels create drag, two, sides, two different types of drag. Um, what's called uh, ventilation drag, the, the actual uh, air being, being upset by being uh, spun around and flowing through the wheel and so on, but also the air passing across the face of the wheel. And the way to reduce both of those sorts of drags is typically to reduce the open area of the wheel. It used to be said that completely enclosing the wheel would give the lowest drag, but we have seen some exceptions to that over the years. In, in any case, completely enclosing the wheel is, is really not an option for most road cars where you have to have brake cooling. So what uh, Skoda have done is they've got different wheels available, different optional wheels. And look at these, aero trim, aero trim, aero trim. The aero trim are the plastic inserts that reduce the open area of the spokes. And compare that with this one that doesn't have the aero insert. And so those aero inserts, if you select the right wheels, and no doubt you have to to get the uh, drag coefficient down to 0.28, the airflow is both smoother across the face and also less airflow is coming through the wheel itself. There it is, the Skoda Fabia. I really think that uh, looking at low price cars and seeing what they're achieving in aerodynamic drag optimization is really illuminating. People tend to forget about those, but they're working under much, much stricter, stricter confines in terms of both the R&D budget, the research and development budget, and also what the car could be sold for in the final uh, case to the customer. So a really interesting and effective uh, bunch of aerodynamic optimizations on that car. If you're interested in this, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, my major book on uh, car aerodynamics. And if you want to test some of these things for yourself, car aerodynamic testing for road and track, two different editions of that book out. Basically, one's much longer than the other and so therefore more expensive. So you can pick the cheaper one if you want to have a, a shorter book. Modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, car aerodynamic for testing for road and track covers all the sorts of things that I have covered in this video. Thank you.